played by an artist with astigmatism. <laughs> <laughs> Julia Jefferson, I could just kill you! Calm down, both of you. Right this instant. Tar, just when I was about to bet two to one odds on Julia. Julia, you're making a fool of yourself. Oh, really? I thought I was making a fool of her. You're drunk. You're right. You didn't honestly think I would make it through a night with this bunch of stuffed shirts sober. <laughs> this woman is an embarrassment. Can't you do something with her? Who rattled your cage? If you don't mind, I'm having a private conversation with my ex-husband. <laughs> Say, Wendy, I've been meaning to ask you. I once heard you offer old Felicia here a lift, and she thought you meant her face. Is that true? <laughs> Gossip, but it's a matter of public record, so I guess there's no reason why I shouldn't tell you. <laughs> 
Murder? Why, yes, Mrs. Jefferson. It's obvious someone murdered your husband. Couldn't my worth have fallen and hit his head? No, ma'am. Someone had to have struck him several times with that rock you found to inflict that much damage. It's definitely murder. And at a party? That's, that's, that's so rude! <laughs> You simply must allow me to use my phone. I am a newspaper woman, and I have a right to report this incident. And where do you plan to fit in your column, Felicia? Between the review of a movie premiere and Devante's engagement announcement? Oh, shut up, Selena! This story would be front page news, and would be picked up by the Associated Press with my byline. Are you sure you didn't crack open Wentworth's cranium to get your chance at a big scoop? <coughs> it sounds like a motive for murder to me. I think he didn't have one already. How dare you? You have more to gain from Wentworth's death than I do. Don't you know, I don't think so. Don't you wait! I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to you keep this up and I'll gag every one of you. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Once my team has secured the crime scene and removed the body, they'll be here to fingerprint each of you. Even though it's not likely we'll be able to lift any prints from a porous object like porous object like a rock. Then they'll, they'll check your hands for residue of blood. We know, of course, we'll find some on Mrs. Jefferson's hands since she picked up the murder weapon. I didn't realize. <laughs> you know, Mamie dear. Out, out, damn spot. Just kidding. I certainly did pull an old Lady Macbeth on my work, though I think he deserves it. <laughs> I believe you did. After all, you and Mr. Jefferson left the room together. Yeah, and when we got outside, he told me I was too drunk to drive and that he'd call me a cab. Well, I said I was never more offended in my entire life. Although I have been lots of time. <laughs> I said I'd find my own way home, thank you very much, and walked off. Staggered off is more like it. Yeah, well, we can't all be as perfect as you are, Deborah. <laughs> Anyways, when I found my car, I got in it, and I figured I'd better stretch out a little bit, take a nap before starting home. In other words, you passed out like a lion. <laughs> you can save your statement until we're ready to take it officially, Mrs. Jefferson. Yes, officer? No, I meant this, Mrs. Jefferson. That's so confusing. I wish you had taken back your maiden name, Julia. What was it? Child. <laughs> yes, like the other one. If you think I'm going back to that, you're crazy. Whenever I was introduced to somebody, they invariably started asking me for recipes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Julia, but it's funny. Go ahead and laugh, Mary Jane. I'm sure it helps to have a sense of humor if you were named after a shoe. Let's get down to business. <laughs> <laughs> I need to interview each of you one by one. What's in there? The library, Lieutenant Reynolds. Fine, I'll use it. I want to start with you, Joe. I sort of assumed you would. The rest of you can remain in here until you're called. Joey? I thought you said your name was Joe Ellen. You're joking. I was going incognito. Let's get this over with Al. Uh, Al? That's awfully informal. <laughs> and you're both named Reynolds. Figure <laughs> it out. We used to be married once upon a time. So this is your ex? Husband. Congratulations, Felicia. I'll nominate you for investigative reporter of the year. <laughs> there's no need to be sarcastic. Save your breath, ma'am. That's like telling the sky there's no need to be blue. Come on, Joey. Sit. <laughs> Sorry. No, I hate being told what to do. I remember. Boy, do I remember. <laughs>
blow your cover, but I guess at this point it doesn't really matter, does it? I owe Mr. Jeffrey to pay you up front. He did, but I haven't earned the money yet. He suspected one of the lovely people in the next room was trying to kill him. Apparently, he was right. I'd say so. If he had hired me sooner, maybe I would have been able to find out who had murder in mind before they struck. As it is, I'll have to catch the killer after. Whoa, hold it right there, Joey. That's my responsibility. Mine too. I'm going to finish the job Mr. Jefferson hired me to do, and you can't stop me. Joey, we've had this conversation before. Lots of times. Too many times. I'm a trained detective, Al, just like you are. I like my job, and I'm good at it. But I worry about you. <laughs> All right, I did when we were together, and I just... I know. I worried about you, too. But it went with the territory. I knew what to expect when I married you, Al. I thought you did, too. It's different. Because I'm a woman? Al, I might not be able to punch some twerp's headlights out like you can, but a well-aged karate chop will be the same result. I have my black belt now. I know judo. I got you in some holes you couldn't get out of. I've got a confession to make, Joey. I didn't want to get out of it. <laughs> that was bad. Let's stick to the present. Fine. You can start by telling me what Wentworth Jefferson hired you to do. Like I said, I thought someone was trying to kill him. There had been some accidents. His widow, maybe, and the servants can tell you about them. He brought me here tonight to meet the suspects. A nice dress. Kind of sexy. <laughs>
when Bonnie told me Mary Jane had left the room, I went to go look for her. I was going to suggest we use the, stay, the spill as an excuse to leave the party early. I didn't find her in any of the guest bedrooms, but then I went outside to join everyone else when I heard a commotion outdoors. I didn't see anybody else around the house when I was looking for her, so I don't have to take my word for it. That's probably the most Paula said without stopping since the last time Mary Jane had laryngitis. <laughs> he could have been telling the truth. The Jefferson Mansion is only slightly smaller than the Smithsonian Museum, so he could have wandered around without seeing anyone or being seen. Had I been searching for his wife, I probably could have tracked her down like a bloodhound by following the scent of her jasmine perfume, but that's beside the point. I'll talk to Felicia Phillips today. He said that well, some witnesses are reluctant to give testimony. He had trouble getting Felicia to shut up. <laughs> I had been insulted by that awful Selena Kane and her brother Sam, a childish oaf. Mamie's flighty, but her manners are impeccable. Her children, on the other hand, are rude, spoiled, and worthless. She should have drowned them both at birth. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean that. <laughs> it sounds awful, considering. <laughs> Look, Lieutenant, I won't beat around the bush. I have no doubt that some of the other suspects you've been questioning told you about the intimate relationship Wentworth and I once shared, and might have suggested that I felt bitter because he dropped me for me. I'll admit, I was disappointed, but if everyone who ever got jilted murdered the one who scored them, why, we'd be tripping over bodies all over the place. <laughs> I assure you, any resentment I felt toward Wentworth, I resolved a long time ago. Anyway, when I left the party, I wandered into the library. There's a television set in there, and I turned it on to watch the news. I am a member of the press, you know, and I always check to see if there's a celebrity in town I might interview. When I heard loud voices, I joined the others and followed them outside to the pool. You know the rest. Al told me that Felicia offered to quote the news stories she had watched, but they were basically the same ones she couldn't see on the 6 o'clock telecast, so her alibi didn't amount to much. I was particularly interested to find out where Sam and Bonnie had gone after leaving the kitchen, since I hadn't seen either of them outside. I didn't want to leave the kitchen unattended, but Sam, Mr. Kane, I mean, insisted I step outside with him. Bonnie practically dragged me out the kitchen door. <laughs> she's crazy about me. Bonnie might look like an innocent little lamb, but she's a real tiger, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> look, Lieutenant, I might as well tell you. Sam and I are in love. That's a secret. I hope you don't tell anyone. Not yet, at least. I'm sure he wants to marry me, but he can't ask me until he gets on his feet financially. What can I say? Girls throw themselves at me all the time. <laughs> Bonnie's a cute kid, though. I don't want to hurt her feelings, but she's just a maid for peace's sake. <laughs> it was chilly outside, so we went over to the greenhouse. It's heated, so Mrs. Jefferson can grow the flowers year round. When we got inside, Sam began to get amorous. I was frightened that Mr. Fields would miss me, that someone might find us. So when I told Sam that I had to leave, he got angry. I pushed him away and walked outside a little to calm down. Then I went back inside the house. Bonnie insisted we go to the greenhouse where we could be alone. Once we got inside, she started kissing me. Not that I minded. But I <laughs> didn't want her to get in trouble with Mr. Fields the old dragon. So I told her to stop and to go back in the house. She got upset when I wasn't responding to her advances and ran out. I looked around for her for a few minutes, but when I couldn't find her, I went back in the house. I feel so awful about what happened to Mr. Jefferson, but now that he's dead and Mrs. Jefferson has control over the family fortune, I'm sure she'll help Sam get established in a career. Then he'll be in a position to propose and we won't have to hide our love for each other anymore. This little crush Bonnie has on me has gone too far. I'll have to let her know once and for all that our little flirtation has to come to an end. I hope I can let her down gently, but if she won't take no for an answer, then I'll just get Mother to fire her. <laughs> Everything's going to work out just fine for us. I feel it in my heart. There are lots of fantastic women out there, Lieutenant. And I intend to get my 
Thank you. 